Ryan here, Ryan's All Things Geek, and I have the at most pleasure of having with us tonight uh, the lead actor of the new movie Limbo, the one and only Mr. Lou Temple. Lou, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Ryan, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's good to see you again. Of course, we've uh, met a couple years ago up in Niagara Falls. Yeah, we did. Uh, across the border in, in Canada, and uh, it's good to see you. Thanks for having me, man. It's, it's good. Hey, hey Matt, it's, uh, it's great to see you. First thing I got to get out of the way is uh, how are you keeping uh, – how, how are you and the family, everybody healthy? Yeah, thanks for asking. We, uh, we are healthy. We've been uh, diligent about, uh, you know, following the regulations, following uh, safe practices, trying to not be out too much, trying not to be uh, – you know, exposed, overexposed. Uh, we, we've taken one staycation, which got us out of the house, which was ideal. It was beautiful. And, um, and other than that, we're doing, we're doing quite well, you know, uh, we, we no complaints, that's for sure. And, um, I think this time has this pause, as we call it, has given all of us a chance to, um, reconnect with a lot of things in our families being one um, communication process sometimes I, I know that I've touched base with far more friends than I had before this had happened I lost that sense of hey I'm gonna call someone check in and and now I I have a better uh, movement to do that and I, and I appreciate that I used to do it all the time we used to do that all the time when all you could do was call but now with texting emailing social media um, you're covered with one you know swipe um, right. so I'm not doing that as much and trying to be on the telephone how you are a little bit more so that's been great um, you and I were talking before we got started about just reconnecting with passions uh, I've or heightening your connection with those passions, pa passions, whether, whether they're art or music or, or writing or, or singing or dancing or all manner of things. And, and the other thing is you got a little more time to try things you never have. Uh, um, I, I did a Bollywood class the other day with my wife and daughter. It was, it was challenging, right. but lots of fun. Lots of fun, you know. Um, so uh, it uh, it was like a moped, you know, a lot of fun. I wouldn't want any of my friends to see me. Ride, right. right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's more fun to ride when no one's around. Uh, Brings us right back to the movie uh, that you do star in, Limbo, here. Um, I, I've only had a chance to take a look at the trailer here. I'm, I can't wait to see this movie. Yeah. Um, Lou, you're a fantastic actor, um, and, and this isn't me you know, fluffing feathers here. Um, I, I first uh, found your acting on The Walking Dead, big fan. Um, okay. Much like everybody else, I was, you know, yeah, shipping yeah. you and Carol. Yeah. <laughs> and your, sure. death was, your death was one of those first ones that, you know, that really hit me for, you know, um, I didn't see it coming at all. And you were a character that I, I kind of looked at almost like Eugene, like you're going to have that staying power. And then... Yeah. Um, just so suddenly it, uh, that right there though, the, the emotions that it brought in me showed me how good of an actor you are. And that just makes me want to see this movie so much more just because of the premise of it. Um, yeah. Tell the folks at home a little bit about the premise, if you will. Well, I, it's what, it's what strong on you to want to see the movie. It's what drew me to the script. It's uh, it is in essence, it's a courtroom drama. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a psychological suspense thriller and uh, you are on trial, or your soul is in purgatory, uh, in judgment of whether you're heading north or you're heading south. Uh, your public defender is an angel sent down from the big guy, and the prosecuting attorney is, uh, is sent up from below by old Scratch himself. <laughs> and um, this is uh, my character has not lived what would be 
considered a uh, serviceable life to mankind. And so there's not on the surface a lot of hope for him. What's great is like 12 angry men, this isn't as clear as it might seem. And we have to play through the trial to see how it turns out. And slowly but surely it starts to unwind and maybe I'm gaining a little purchase for my soul <laughs> and or salvation. And then there's a great plot twist at the end, which is great. So mm. the idea, the premise of your soul um, it, uh, on trial in court, uh, I just thought was you know, very fascinating, very interesting, not a lot done like it before mm -hmm. and, uh, and delicious. Uh, the gentleman that wrote it and directed it, Mark Young, is a dear friend of mine. I've worked with Mark. This will be our fourth movie. So everything he wow. writes, I'm kind of, I connect with. He, uh, he's very cerebral. He's, uh, he, he, he's, he has a lot of hidden meaning, and I, I'm always drawn to that. And so, and I'm thankful because he, uh, like Rob Zombie, he thinks of me uh, often when he's building a project. So he invited me to come do this and, and uh, you know, when I initially read the script, uh, I was thinking about the role of the uh, prosecuting, you know, attorney. This uh, this this demon from hell. That's uh, that's you know, he's is that Richard oil. Leo? It's Balthazar. No. Oh, right. It's, it's okay. Balthazar. So, but but Mark wisely, he instinctually said, I think I might go young with this, like a kid with some teen angst, even though he's centuries and centuries old and he's seen it all and he's experienced, but put him in a young veneer and, and, and baggy clothes and just, and let him play through with all the experience and yet still some father issues, some daddy issues uh, upstairs mm. with, with God. And it, it works perfectly and played uh, just, just spot on by Lucian Collier, who we sort of found in this film. Really exciting. Uh, and, and the cast is amazing. Uh, the cast is, is so well crafted. We didn't have a lot of time to build this. And typically, this, this film is very much like, like a stage play. Uh, and so it's the type of thing you would rehearse very typically. Right. Also, it's, it's in a courtroom and there's just three of us or four of us, so there, it could get a little talking head. So we had to be very dynamic to keep it moving. And what I'm getting to is it took a lot of craftsmanship to build right. it from everyone. And we didn't have a lot of rehearsal time to tweak it. So Mark very wisely brought in actors who he knew were going to bring something to the party and, and not require um, a lot of adjustments. And so it really paid off for him. There's so much just. Right. And, and Go ahead. I was looking at the trailer and we, we, we see, uh, obviously yourself, we see uh, Richard Real in this movie. Uh, He's Robert so great. Cartwright. Like, I mean, Amazing. veterans of, of the game, you know, like these are legends, you know, in, within their own rights. So when I had the opportunity to, you know, and, and and Mark was like, well, what do you think about, I'm going to bring Veronica in to do this role. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I, that, you know, this for me is worth doing the movie right there. And then when he said, and I've got Richard and I'm like, wow, so we're great. So Veronica is, an, uh, as you said, a legend and she shows up as if she's not, there's no diva. Wow. There's, I mean, it's, as, and she's all about getting into the work and it's not, what you know, real enjoyable stuff we're dealing with here. Um, and she's just taking so much joy in her work, which is infectious in the day. And uh, the great thing about her, there's so many great things. She can be still and she has so much power and passion and vulnerability and ire in her eyes. She has great eyes. There's, there's actresses, I'd like to do a whole special about actresses' eyes. Uh, male actors have them too, but I think a female actress can be captivating. She's one. She's well, one. Betty Davis. Thank you. Yeah. Right? Um, there's another lady I work with named um, uh, Meg Foster, who has incredible. Oh, eyes. right, from He Man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she played yeah. Evil Lynn back yeah. in the day. Yes. I, 
I'm a I'm a Gen Xer, so yeah, you're, you're talking so you right up my enough. alley. So Veronica, of course, has this. Now Richard is an adorable. I mean, he's so kind. He's he's a he's he's just got a charming soul and spirit, and you you just can't help but be drawn to him. And he does have a face that's just delightful. So he can just draw you in. We he and I have a scene where he is so forlorn about something that he will never get to see Disney world. As a matter of fact, uh, just based on being in purgatory, but he just longs to see right. it. And yet my characters had the whole opportunity of his whole life to experience that and takes it so for granted. So the juxtaposition works so well and his speech about delivering what it would be like to, to have that. It's just heart wrenching. It's great. And he's great. Then he also is the, comedic foil he's the comedy relief in this and so he actually tells a lot did you hear the one about <laughs> he's quite funny and they're really right. they're really great and they're all dirty jokes by the way they're all well we're going to take a look at the trailer in just a second Please. but it sounds it sounds like this this movie um it it's not just a it wasn't just a job for you or another movie it's no. like you had a lot of your heart in this movie. For sure, yeah. I adored the script and I recognized what the task was at hand. Uh, it was very difficult because we were confined in a space. It would be almost like doing the whole movie in, in this box that you're looking at yourself right. at right now. And, and, and so with that being in mind, we had to keep that busy. You know, we had to leave frame and, and come back in and talk and, and, and push in when we were really trying to, you know, get a point across and be right. he moved back when we saw things. And, and so there was a lot of uh, shot composition that Mark was building with that understanding. And then we understood the tension that we had to maintain so that it just didn't flatten out. Mm -hmm. My character typically is very violent and he's, his reaction is, is, off the cuff and spur of the moment and and so none of that got to play in this situation which further supported the idea of i'm in a strange place and because so often i'd say mark why don't i just grab this guy why don't i just smack him why don't i just burst out and leave why don't i throw something to break something he goes you can't in purgatory that's it's you're just limited you don't have the capacity to do so of which then was a real color that I had to play in, in this scenes, it, 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 almost, you know, three quarters of the movie, which was great. great. So it was a great acting exercise. It was a great character development uh, opportunity. And, and so I'm, I'm really proud of it and proud of it from uh, everyone's standpoint, because everyone's characters have these life arcs that we're quite interested in. Um, James Purefoy comes in and plays Satan. And he just he just chews it up. It's beautiful, and he does it in sort of a kind of a George Bush, you know, kind <laughs> of a little bit of a George. You know, he's quite bushy in it, and uh, right. but you know, he's he's southern. He just dismisses. He's dismissive. I could care less. Okay, handle it, handle it, handle it. Right. And then he's got you know he's got a number two in Peter Jacobson, who's very David Mamet, and just you know he spits out dialogue so quick and rapidity and blah, 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 blah. That's the smell of victory. And he's he's uh. He, you know, he's terrible and terse and, and, uh, but, but he's great at what he does. And, and so everybody's, and Scotty Thompson then is defending me as the angel. Mm -hmm. She's so kind of cold and sterile and yet very vulnerable and unsure of herself and trying to maintain, you know, this, this, this pious righteousness but questioning it all along. So it's really right. interesting. Very interesting. Well, let's take a quick look at the trailer right now. All New right. Tempo in Limbo. So, James, let's go over your defense. What defense? Quite the model citizen. Armed robbery, grand theft, assault, battery. Can someone tell me what the hell is going on? You are dead. So where am I now then? Limbo. It's a neutral place between heaven and hell. There is no way 
that this low life's getting into heaven whilst I'm stuck here. When you die, you die. You're dead. End of story. That's it. Done. I trust you about as far as I can speak. You smell that? That's the smell of victory. Limbo. What is that? Closer to hell. It's more like Jersey. I love it. So, Lou, yeah, when, when can folks uh, expect to see Limbo? Uh, it comes out on August the uh, 4th in some respects. I think the DVD is available the 4th. And then it's out on iTunes. Uh, and I think um, uh, the other streaming is, uh, is Hulu, I think, on August the 8th. So uh, I'm really excited for everyone to see it because I think it, it challenges your, your mind, your perspective. It's, it's very different. The performances are great. And um, it has a little bit of everything. You know, there's a, it's, it's very psychological. It's got some dark humor. Um, there's some demons in there. So it can, it can, it can nudge a little bit into the horror genre. Uh, definitely supernatural sci-fi. Uh, it can challenge your theological uh, beliefs. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's got a lot. So I'm very excited. And during these times, as we're sitting day to day in the unknown, um, it's rather apropos. Yeah, you can say that. And uh, the one thing that sticks out to me in, uh, in the trailer the trailer is beautifully cut together yeah, as well. It is. It but is. the cinematography in this, and you were talking about having you know, such a small kind of, you know, box to, to yep. perform in, that becomes a logical, a uh, logistical nightmare yep. for your director, your cinematographer, or anybody else involved yeah. on, on that side of things. So, Crystal uh, I, 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 Christos is our DP. He's fantastic. He works, uh, he works a lot on the CSI series. He shoots, um, he shoots television quite a bit, so he's able to move very quickly he's able to light very quickly which served us so wonderfully but his shots are so they have such a feel of depth to them and then mark's compositions about framing and certain movement i think it really lends itself uh to to the look of the picture which is as you said fantastic so we were fortunate we the art direction was a lot of fun and you know it's um it's a movie that i think it, is going to do well when people see it i think it's going to get a good word of mouth yeah i, I, I think I'm, you're right i'm there. totally excited for it i did another movie uh a year or so ago a couple years ago called the endless which is very sci-fi it's um and, and there's a there's a little cross-pollination between the two it, it kind of challenges the theories about how you live your life and right. what you think I, you know about your life is maybe not, not what really is your life interesting now do you do you tend to lean towards more of those life lesson scripts or those those um looking within you know and kind of you know looking within while looking outside as well yeah uh, type roles? yes even when they're not built that way uh some directors <laughs> would say unfortunately uh, oftentimes i get a script and i read it and and i read it in a in a room and that room is my imagination. And so sometimes I will read a script and it won't, it'll be in my mind, not the, the words on the page. And I'll show right. up to set with an idea about what this is. And it, it may or may not be. And the director sometimes will say, that's interesting, Lou, but that's exactly not what we're doing. Uh, <laughs> but right. wow, that's really cool. Too bad we didn't write it that way. But here's how it's really written, if, in case you didn't read it. Uh, so I have to be careful that way, but I do, I do look for um, the underlying meanings and the underlying subtext of what's there because I'm like anyone else. I think that's what um, 
engages us. I think right. that it, it's called fishing, right? It's not called catching. Uh, it's called hide and seek, not hide and find. Uh, right. we, love to look under, we love to wonder what's under the bed or what's in the closet or, you know. Where's Waldo? Not there's Waldo. Exactly. Thank right. you. And so that's the great uh, experience of being human is to seek. And, mm -hmm. and so I, I'm no different. And I, I look for that in, in scripts. I look for that in stories. And, and I try to find it when it's not there. And when it is there, then I'm certainly thrilled with it and, and try to serve it in, in storytelling for the most part. Yeah, for sure. Now, you have a, a great outlook on life and, a, and not the typical way of looking at the world, especially when you hear it from most entertainers. Now, you've had one of these most uh, storied lives that I could think of. Oh, I mean, you're, yeah. you're, a, you're a baseball player. You were, um, yeah. like, I mean, minors, majors. You, uh, you were in the front office as well. But you've yeah. also gone to acting. You, you've acted opposite big stars like Denzel. Yeah, ma'am. Is, is this what gives you perspective? Or, like, was there at some point you have to, like, sit back and, do the proverbial pinch yourself to be like, wow, this, this is a pretty darn good life. I like the idea that I still get um, excited about it because that means that I'm still, you know, I'm still fuzzy. I'm still, I'm still buzzing. I'm still, so I still am excited. Um, my excitement, I think today is a little bit different. Like anybody that's starting to have some, some experience, some road in life, you know, got some road behind me, uh, your experience becomes different in that I'm enjoying uh, observing other actors, other cameramen, other writers. I'm enjoying the observation of their work and getting exposed to it. And, oh, I see you. I see what you just did there. And, I, and now I'm recognizing all of this. I go back to you know, others that I go, oh, that's what, that's what they were doing. Oh, I see that. Now I got, you know, and I think that's a really fun place to be. And, and so, um, so I have been a observer of life since I can remember uh, being a kid playing in the woods or hunting and fishing. I think just being out in nature makes you observe, uh, when a granddad's telling you, pointing things out, you know, you want to, you want to get his, you know, approval. So you might point some, I started looking for things to point out. I started, I, I, you know, did you notice that track granddad? I did. I'm glad you did. Okay. So that just led me. Then I started observing in baseball, what, how it took to become a, a good player because I was going to have to do that. Then I understood, look, I see what Ken Griffey Jr. does my first year out. I don't do that. And I recognize there's nothing about him and I that are the same. So I got to figure out how to survive. So my observing made me survive. And then I've taken that into acting and observing what it, it's going to take for me to be able to, to be active in this arena. So observation is good for me. And then um, supporting that would be imagination and being yeah. available to the possibility or the improbability and maybe we can. And so I really adore those kinds of things. Uh, and, and yeah, you know, I have had incredible life experiences. You said the baseball background, um, baseball is my first passion. It still is love mm -hmm. baseball. I still have the same dream that I had when I was 12 and I'm walking down the, I don't know why I, uh, it's Yankee stadium. Uh, I think it's because I always, I learned baseball about Babe Ruth and the Yankees through my granddad. Right. So I'm thinking it must be that, but uh, I'm a Braves fan, not a Yankee fan, but um, I'm walking through the tunnel of Yankee stadium and I, you know, I've got the number on my back and it's uh, it's 33 and I'm going out to take the field as this man who I'm not. I, I, in my mind, this guy is dark hair. He doesn't look like me, but it's me. And I had it when I was 12, and I still have it. Wow. Which is super cool. You know, I don't think our dreams ever die, though, do they? I don't think so. Like, even if we realize those dreams, they, I think they just kind of expand. Yeah. You know? And um, so I love that. And, and I'm, uh, I'm some 
someone that pay attention, pays attention to my dream. If I dreamt, if you were in my dream, I would probably call you the next day. That'd be a message for me to check in. Right. You know? So I, I do that. Um, and then I have had a life experience. I'm a leukemia survivor. Right. Uh, there was a point in my life where uh, it was it was hit or miss, and I recognized that my tomorrows may not be, and my yesterdays didn't matter, and my nows were what was happening. And so uh, that made me appreciate it and be grateful, and and uh, and you know. I would like everyone to have that perspective and everyone does really, you know, mm -hmm. hopefully never have to go through that. Uh, we're going through it now, you know, worldwide. So, so yeah. And so, um, so I observed having gone through that and understand what that was. And, um, and I still get mad and I still get frustrated. You just ask my wife. Uh, <laughs> and so, um, but I know better. You know, I, I, right. I know better in my heart and in my mind. I know, wait, you're lucky to be here. Let's back it up. Let's stop, drop, and roll. Let's just drop, bring it down, bring it down to a level of, uh, of good intention and gratitude, and then roll back to a better state of energy. And that's, uh, that's what I try to, to focus on. For sure. Now, and, and you talk about this, and all I keep thinking is about, um, one, how well adjusted you are. To, you know, just the thought process to be thinking of everybody. It, it seems to be like that seems to be a, a big proponent of your life is to think about others first uh, before yourself. Um, and thinking that, it, it kind of brings me to, you've got a website out there uh, called the Texican. Yeah. Um, where you're giving a lot of help to people out there as well uh, in another way. Can you tell yeah. folks at home about that? It's a, uh, it's a storytelling. Um, vehicle uh, i'm trying I'm trying to get people because we love stories and i realize you know i'm rather bored of this my story because i keep telling it so i want to hear some other people i want to hear your story and i'm trying to invite people to get involved to telling their stories not because they're going to be actors or because they're going to be writers or because they're going to sell the great american novel and i hope they do all of that um, but just because I think we, again, part of our experience is telling the story, just like it is listening to the story, campfire stories. Oh, I've got one. Oh, listen to this. No, really? Oh man, I can't believe that. Tell that story. You know the one. Okay. Right. No, you don't want me to tell that again. Yes, I do. I mean, look, this is the human experience and, uh, I just, it's what I in, in turned on with and I'm just inviting others who might be or might not know how to go about engaging in that um, you can get on uh, it's nominal fee it's five bucks to throw in and I'm gonna bring my work behind the scenes talk about that scene with Carol you know because uh, you, you got the short hair um, <laughs> yeah. talk about, uh, I'm gonna talk about going toe to toe with Denzel and, and being very nervous. Um, I'm going to talk about scenes that didn't make it and why and scenes that were good, but uh, they were a train wreck to film uh, with Bill Mosley and Rob Zombie, or this is my least favorite thing that I've ever done. It turned out that people love it. Um, but I'm also going to say, you know, I wrote a whole script on, on the website, page for page, turned in the pages, you're the audience, you judge him. Nah, I don't think he would say that. Oh, wow, he's gonna do that? How about if he, you know, is he wearing a red shirt? Because I'm thinking, well, okay, let's have him wear a red shirt. And uh, uh, so it's the Texican, and uh, that's just kind of my brand, um, and I, I like it, so you're all invited. Uh, we tell stories, I'll, you know, we'll write some songs, and, and uh, Tell a story. I, I did a movie called Rango. You remember Rango? I sure do. We won an Oscar. And I didn't Johnny have... Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. He was so fun in that. Everybody was so fun. Tim Oliphant plays the Spirit of the West. He sound, sounds a lot like Clint Eastwood. And he has a line in there, no man can walk out on his own story. And I kind of believe that. You can tell all your stories, but in the end, you're going to have 
not to tell yours mm -hmm. and why not get started now love it now how can folks get a, get involved with uh with the Texacan, where you do they go, go on? To, with? Uh, you, you just go, uh, there's Lou Temple. You, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram and I'm posting on it all the time. You just go Lou Temple Patreon. It's called the Texacan. You'll bang, you can sign up and drop in and we'll get started. Super easy. That's and uh, amazing. Uh, and so we're having fun doing it. And, uh, and then I want to try to, you know, I'm trying to build a production company, if nothing else, where, you know, we're going to, film some of this stuff and get it out there, you know, and build our own TV station and our, our own world of entertainment. I love it. Yeah, I man. Love it. It, it's it no different like, than what you're doing. You know, you're building not just your brand, but your story and your exactly. story encapsulates many others and your interest and your joy. Yeah. Well, and, you know, all we, both of us are trying to do is just kind of craft our own kind of little niche in the market. And, yeah. uh, Last thing I, I want to touch on before we get out of here, speaking of craft, is uh, Time Crafters. Tell us a little bit about the Time Crafters. Oh, thanks. Well. Yeah, Time Crafters is a movie that's uh, a, a family adventure film molded in the in the confines of the Goonies. For all you, you, you know, Ryan and I will know that Goonies there was you guys. A, a delight. So uh, pirates from the 1700s are transported. They're in a, in a battle over a treasure and they're in a, a, a vortex, the old vortex, but it always works, um, in, in a storm, and, and, and a hidden time machine uh, in, amongst the treasure transports them to modern day seaside renaissance festival, um, modern times. And so they, they fit right in in their pirate regalia with all the other, uh, pirate reenactors and so the town thinks nothing of them wandering around but our five kids notice our five heroes notice something different and they actually uh discover the 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 booty and they're being chased by our pirates and and then uh all high manner of hijinks and action and adventure uh ensue and we're able to really do some amazing things uh we built a pirate ship uh, in a sound stage, so we're able to, oh, and, wow. yeah, use green screen and back projection to be out on the high seas and have cannon fodder, and it's just so great. And uh, I play a uh, nefarious professor who's actually traveled in time uh, in advance, and he's kind of made residence, but he's he's got a plan. If he can get this time machine working, he can rule the world, you know? And so these kids are our heroes and they do such a great job like the kids in Goonies. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're due out in the fall. Uh, we have uh, Malcolm McDowell is our, our uh, lecherous Captain Lynch. Arg. <laughs> We've got a lot of args in this movie. And uh, Eric Balfour is our, our swashbuckling Errol Flynn, handsome pirate. And his uh, his ingenue is is Denise Richards, who's uh, uh, who's fantastic, and myself and Pat Muldoon and our five children, oh, wow. uh, headed up by Casey Simpson, uh, who uh, is famed from uh, Ricky Dicky, Nikki and Dawn, which was a okay. a kids show, which was on Nick, I think, and it was great. Uh, so I'm very excited about this, not just because well, because it's a family adventure, and I'm really supportive of that. And also, uh, I'm active as a producer on it. So uh, we just were in the Con Film Festival, uh, virtual, and did right. really well. So we've got a lot of people interested in purchasing the movie. And now it's all about let's make a deal um, virtually. <laughs> it used to be that you you did it face to face, and now yeah. you you do it on uh, on a Zoom. Uh, no more no more handshake deals. It's just Zoom. Yeah, that's that's Zoom is uh, the way of the world now. Yeah, you got forty um, minutes. You got forty minutes, and then you're done. Exactly. Uh, it's so great. Yeah, it's really good. Well, well, luckily we we paid for the extra today so that we could uh, go a little bit longer. <laughs> there's a man. That, um, there's a man that's thinking. Uh, again, uh, when does Limbo come out? When can people expect it? And what uh, Limbo is uh, is twofold. Uh, the DVD hard sale is. Um, the 4th of August, which right. is next week, and the 8th is when it comes out streaming. So I'm excited as that goes. Uh, 
there's, uh, you know, The Endless is out on Netflix. I'd encourage everyone to see that. Sure. Uh, there's, uh, there's always something out there that I have that's interesting. I, you know, I do a lot of, int- I like to keep it, I like to keep it diverse and interesting. Um, I have a television series uh, on the BET network called The Fifth Ward, which is oh, wow. about uh, Houston, Texas. Uh, uh, gentrifying a uh, an urban neighborhood to build a football stadium, Reliance uh-huh. Stadium, uh, which is you know we all need a football stadium. We do. <laughs> we always do. Yeah, we don't the need the, we don't need the neighborhoods. We need no. the stadium. Exactly. So I play the mayor of Houston, which I've always uh, wanted to play, uh, which is great. And uh, there's a young lady in that show. Do you remember Maya? Were you ever a Maya fan, the uh, musician? The, the singer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember Maya. She's, she's good. In it well. she's, uh-huh. she's, she's the lady I'm moving out, you know? So, <laughs> uh, so, so that's great. Uh, that's out there. Uh, there's a uh, H.P. Lovecraft uh, property that I'm building uh, for a television series with, with, with some uh, some producers a showrunner from the blacklist and i'm hoping we get back after it because this show is going to be really really high end and i'm really excited about wow. it called in's mouth so in's uh, mouth and hp lovecraft is fun very fun. Love it. yeah well Cthulhu. Right. yeah right, all Cthulhu, right? Oh so. okay so that's <laughs> the only that's the only thing we don't show in this <laughs> This is the, the short story. Can, probably. Yeah, this is yeah. the short story about the frog people, if you remember. Yeah, yeah I'm not, it's been a while. Yeah, I always remember Johnny Quest. When I think of frog people, I think of Johnny Quest. Right, in the, in Aji. The, yeah, Aji. Yeah, yeah. Those yeah. guys, those are great. Did we redo that show ever? Um, I believe it came back out in the '90s for for yeah. a sh- uh, short time. Um, I have a couple of comic book friends that are in the industry that have uh, yeah. redone it as a comic book. Uh, I think once with Image and one with Dark Horse or somebody else. But yeah, it's it's one of those properties. It was ahead of its time, if you think about it, though. Entirely. Just to think of, you know, um, mixed Real races bad. just hanging out together. Yeah. Best Single friends, bad. a white guy and, a, and an Indian boy. It's just something you didn't think of, especially yeah. now. You wouldn't even think of that now. You wouldn't believe that. You wouldn't. Because of how some people would be. But there was there was uh, there was never any problem with it. Uh, and you know what? Hey, um, I've got this uh, this Manny. I don't really it's not a nanny, but this man race man right. who's like a super spy. Right. <laughs> he was Archer before Archer. You know, I mean, um, by the way, I'm my, so my, happy you referenced Archer. My yeah, favorite I just show. That out there. It's, oh, my favorite, it's my favorite show. Season uh, 11's coming out. They just dropped the trailer. I'm super excited. It's crazy. I, I don't know. I always, so one of the games we play is, okay, let's do live action Archer. And we let's always, do it. We, so, okay. Archer's John actually. John the go-to that everyone says, though, for Archer. And I'm, I know, I'm I not don't with know, that. I think he's too old. I don't know if he's snarky enough. I say Ryan Reynolds, even though Reynolds is in everything. Reynolds, I think he's kind of perfect. His attitude is kind of. Reynolds the is same as Archer. good. I might, believe it or not, I might go, because I'm looking for someone really irreverent, you know, that kind of goes. Like Sean William Scott. Like Stifler. Yeah, yeah. But mm. maybe but a not little, someone that's also dangerous. So. Uh, if I clean Jason Momoa up, maybe, you know, someone of that, even though yeah. he, he's huge, you know, but he's just got that, he's got that irascibility that's, that's, that that's great. Okay. Um, mm, Lana, Lana's really easy for me. Keep it the same? Yeah. No, no, Taylor. no, no, oh. no, no, sorry. I'm going Rosario Dawson. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you can put her in anything, though, really. Okay, maybe she'll play Archer. Maybe, <laughs> I like that. that way we can have them both. <laughs> no, I like that. I like that. I like Rosario Dawson as uh, as Lana. I just think Aisha Taylor looks just like Lana. Like, I think they drew it to look like her, but... They did. Yeah. And, and she, she is. I think she doesn't get to do it because of yeah. uh, because she's already doing it better than anybody. So, we so would you say the same then with Parnell then? Parnell's out as Cyril? 
Yeah. So who do you have as Parnell? Because I have an idea there. Uh, I'm going to... Uh... I was gonna go with um, <laughs> I always <laughs> like going against type, but I was gonna go with uh, either someone like um, Rain Wilson or uh, oh. or uh, B- Billy Bob Thornton or uh, yeah, really weird. Like, Love like, it. Yeah, that, that that blows mine away. I was gonna say Jason Sudeikis, but <laughs> well, he's great. No, Jason's yeah. perfect. You yeah. know, he, he's ideal for that. You know, yeah, it's uh, almost too perfect. You're you're casting those. I like the quirkiness of it better. Outside outside of the box, right? And then yeah. um, they got Cheryl. You know, yeah, or Pam. Pam's tough because uh, I think Pam's almost the easiest. With Pam, I go with um, um, that comedian uh, that just had the baby. Oh, Schumer. I, yes, Amy Schumer. Okay, yeah, that's. I go good. with Amy Schumer all day, every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. Uh, but and then there's a certain element. You remember the one season when it was um, where she was it Vice? Was it the Vice season where she was? Uh, in transition, Pam. Oh, that was in one of his uh, dream years. Yeah, his coma years, where she was. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was the vice. No, 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 that wasn't vice. Sudden, it was, yeah. She was physically a little different, so you know, it kind of was heading more to Kristen Johnson, or uh, you know, it was right. <laughs> or no, Jenny McCarthy. You know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, you know? right. So we can go uh, Gwendolyn Christie. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Star exactly. Wars and Game of Thrones. Yeah, uh, for I sure. like it. For sure. I love it. Yeah. Okay, so, so who do you have for Cheryl then? Because I think Cheryl is low key my favorite character on that show next to Archer. Just the tip. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> I've dated a lot of Cheryls. Just put that yeah. out there. <laughs> no. Um. So because because she's. Uh, I feel like the the it's got to be someone who 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 reads as the uh, she's got to read very demure on the front, but be very uh, entitled in the back. You know, right. it's the El Camino of actors, and so, um, <laughs> <laughs> so so I like the girl. Uh, uh, that that was on Sex in the City, uh, the, the raven-haired girl, um, Kristen, was it Kristen? Kristen Thompson, or yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, so yeah. sort of that's the the front. Nice, yeah. But then it's a Sarah Silverman in the back, right? <laughs> and and so, <laughs> so... I love Sarah Silverman. So, so if much. she can pull off the front, if she could just, you know, hey, mm-hmm. we'll let you know, just, mm, okay, now, <laughs> you know. Okay, uh, so she she'd be Sarah would be fun. Yeah. I, think. I went really young with mine. I went Bella Thorne. Oh, Bella who, Thorne's great. Yeah, right. Just because she's got that. She yeah. looks. She looks very normal, and yeah. like you said, and yeah. But she also has that side of her that can go choke me and you know be absolutely crazy. That's really it. that. That's more interesting. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's perfect. Well, uh, this, this is something we do on my page a lot. We do uh, like oh, fan casting. So good, good. Yeah. All right. So where do we go with Ray? With Ray, um, geez, that's we Ray's can go a back tough with, one. There's so we many. Go back that, Billy, Billy Bob, can we go back? You know, or uh, ooh, uh, Billy Bob would be. That's an interesting choice to Billy Bob Thornton right there. What about a Steve Buscemi? If Steve isn't too old for the, for that role? Yeah, I'm. I'm, uh, he's great. But I do like Billy Bob. I'm, I'm looking for. Cause you uh, need a country look. guy. Yeah. I'm going to go out on the limb and I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go way out. So if, if, so sometimes when you, this is the type of thing we talk about on, um, on the Texican. Sometimes when you build a really solid cast, like we've done, you can take, you can take a wild card draft pick. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so now we're down on Ray. He's he's not our quarterback, but now we can 
you know, we've got a D back that we're going to take a chance on. And so I'm going to go with Tiger King. Um, <laughs> right? I, I've been saying I've only seen half an episode. Um, I saw half an episode of the seventh episode where his fiance or his husband accidentally killed himself. Right. And I was like, okay, that's enough for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So but that being said, I could even not even so much Ray, but playing Ray's brother. Okay. Yeah, even though I get that, that Joe Exotic is actually uh, gay himself, I can see no. him playing the straight brother as well, right. you know? Yeah. But uh, be, what, a, what great, a great choice. Great juxtaposition. Yeah. Maybe even McConaughey. Oh, McConaughey would be great. He would be He's so good. And Cruz um, can play his brother. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of the few people on the face of the planet that has no problem saying, how good of an actor I think Tom Cruise is. I love I, Tom Cruise. I, I, me too. And he and I, I get his off screen stuff and antics could be whatever. But I, I'm it's rare that I find him in a movie, whether a movie where I don't like his acting. There's been plenty of movies of his that I don't like the movie. Yeah. But I, I try to separate the actor from, you know. I the think movie. somehow he got lost in that Valkyrie thing. Uh, somewhere he was yeah. going one way, the movie was going another, and the, tweet, the two sh shall never meet. Yeah, I still uh, haven't seen that one. Yeah. My go-to is The Last Samurai. I just, oh, right. to me, that is one of the most beautiful movies I've ever, yeah. I've ever seen. Yeah. I have it right up there with Shawshank, so. Very um, good, yeah. And so we're, uh, we're just stuck on... Um, uh, Mallory. Mallory. And there, I think it's because, you know, there's so many uh, great opportunities and choices. I mean, you could... Anyone can pull it nope. off that, that we're talking about. If we, you know, we want to go high end and go uh, Meryl Streep, Glenn Close, we can go there. I mean, but, and, and the only rule is uh, they can't have done it in the animated series. Otherwise, right. we just cast them all as themselves. <laughs> exactly. They're, they're going to be. Except crazy. for H. John Benjamin, unfortunately. The only one that doesn't look like his character is Archer. The great thing about him is uh, he's got a great mustache. Um, <laughs> yeah. He's perfect for Bob. I was just going to say, he can play Bob, no problem. Um, uh, I think one of my, my – I've got a couple of weird ones. Uh, maybe not so weird, but my first one is one of my favorite uh, – and I say sex symbol actresses out there because I've had a long-time crush on her – is Helen Mirren. I was just going to say Helen Mirren. Yeah. Helen She's Mirren great. is so great. She, there's nothing she can't do. Um, yeah. Give her an American accent. Give her a native British accent. Comedy. Uh, straight drama. Yeah. Thrillers. She can just, to me, she, she was, is she was Charlize a, Theron before Charlize yeah. Theron was. Good point. She was a, she was a sex bomb uh, in, her, in her day. And, uh, I kind of think she's sexier now. Well, like when she came out with Red. I was like, I looked at some of her older movies, and then I looked at Red, and I was like, wow, yeah, like, this still, woman, is, still she is it. the one that actually does get better with age. Yeah, she's still bringing it, Miss Mirren. That's the truth. Yeah. Well, there you uh, go. I think we cast Archer. I think we got it all cast wait, there. I got one more. I got, huh? In the drawer, a copy. <laughs> um, I was being requested where I hid uh the barbecue potato chips <laughs> well i'm glad to see you have those in the states as well because i know a lot of uh, the chips we have here or potato chips we have here in uh, canada you don't have there you don't have ketchup you don't have all dressed we don't uh, you don't have yeah, ketchup, but everybody is you know they fight for those ketchup chips <laughs> those are those are fairly amazing and yeah have those always been canadian or is that a product that came out in the last five years Oh, they've, as long as I've been alive, they've been around. Okay. Um, but I don't know if they were something from the, uh, from the UK that we brought over, because we have, like, Cadbury here as well. So we have a lot right. of the same chocolate and candies they have there we have here. But, right. um, yeah. They're, so, wait, uh, and do you call them chips or do you call them crisps? We call them chips. Okay. Yeah, potato chips. Well, we just call them chips usually. Chips, But we yeah, call yeah. it pop, pop and chips. You guys call it soda, right? 
We do soda and we do say chips, but in the UK, I think they're known as crisps. Yeah, they are definitely known as crisps. We have a big fan base in the in uh, England and in uh, for some strange reason, Australia is really big, oh, big hitter it, for us. So it must be the Commonwealth. <laughs> must be. Yeah, it must be the Queen. Yeah, I would. It's, <laughs> always, it's always the Queen. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're Meghan Markle, that was too soon for that joke. Okay. <laughs> She said, uh, yeah, so did, did she even get a post office box in Canada ever? The Queen? Ma Megan. Oh, Megan. Uh, I think so. I mean, they're here now in Los yeah, Angeles. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, but they, they do own uh, property in Canada as well. They I'm just not sure where. Okay, I got you. Yeah, got you. they're on the same kind of witness uh, relocation in Canada that uh, Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell are. We all know they live in Canada somewhere. We just don't know where. Wow. That's fantastic. Well, you know what? That's a tribute to you on, let's say, on two counts. One, that Canada's so big you can hide out. And two, you are so nonplussed or starstruck that you just let them alone and not be bothered. They're a lot like moose. You know, we got them, but we just leave them. To, we, 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 we try not to scare them. Yeah, yes, let them do in their natural habitat here out there. Exactly. In uh, Texas, for some reason, we say Canardia. I don't know why. Them Canardia. Canardia. We drop an R in there. For in Canada? Canada? Yeah. Weird. Uh, that Canardia. It's it weird. And it's not something, I think it's because Texas likes to make everything its own. It's just like, well, let's put an R in there. Them well, I'll tell you what, Lou, next time you're in uh, Niagara Falls or in, in the area, uh, make sure you look me up, and we I will bring you to Niagara Falls, one of their best little clubs that they have. I'm a little old for the club scene now, but it is called Big Texas, and it is uh, nice. our number one line dancing. Uh, wow, well, I know it's area, good. So. One of my favorite places is uh, Calgary during the Stampede. I love that. Right. Uh, they have a uh, – the Calvary, Calgary Comic Con is amazing. That's a great show if you ever get a chance to go there. I love the Niagara Falls show. Uh, I, I always have a good time. I meet a lot of great people. The food is excellent, obviously. I eat Niagara Falls. Uh, and um, it's just great. I always enjoy my visits there. They're, it's, it's super easy. You know, we typically fly into Buffalo and drive across. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's really easy, and, and uh, everyone's super nice. It's, 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 it's really – and it's beautiful, totally beautiful. Uh, Lou, this has been an absolute pleasure. Um, always great talking with you. Um, like I said, next time you're in Niagara Falls, uh, look me up. We've got a, sh a new shirt with your name on it. I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited, and I hope we geeked out enough. Uh, I was going to ask you about comic books. Uh, I'm not as – aficionado as you are but occasionally i you know because i get out we were out of the i would get offered them from artists and they're amazing aren't they mm. um, oh they are and and i think that that's another art form that's that because it's storytelling and graphic mm -hmm. novel uh I, i'm always super impressed with it it's also what's known as intellectual property so it's um it's serial episodic, so people are looking right. for it. So you've got a comic book out there. You've got a good idea. You've got gold, my friend. Uh, hey, if you've got a comic book out there, Netflix or Amazon's probably looking to make it into a TV show. Yeah, that's the truth. That's the yeah. truth. I, I, there's a place, um, Lafayette, Louisiana, interesting, has a great comic book community, a great graphic novel. They have a lot of graphic artists there. I'm not sure why. But there's one out of there called The Chew. And it's a really good, it's a really good graphic novel. So the keep an eye out of that. The yeah, truth. I'm gonna write that down right now. And there's another one that is being done that I I loved, and I wanted to talk to the artist. And about the time I talked to him, he goes, "Oh, I just sold it to Netflix. It's called The Postman. The Postman. Oh, wow. And it's nice. gonna be, it's really good. So, so well, I'm like I said, that seems to be the way it's going right now. Is uh, yeah, comic sure. books are kind of still the forefront. There's more. Are you a comic book guy? Oh, I'm like I'm not a writer or anything like that. I am just a, a lifelong fan. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. I shouldn't even say lifelong. I didn't read my first comic book until uh, the end of high school, honestly. And then I just it got so enthralled with the story, I kept buying more and more. And then it's like anything that you collect, it becomes sometimes it becomes more about making sure you collect them every week 
more yeah. than it is about the actual story that's going on that week. Yeah, I think that's that task complete uh, experience. That's your being a student of your calendar. I well, must exactly. do. You're, that, well, this that, is my latest obsession. Wow. My, uh, you yeah. can buy these Marvel Legend figures and they each, so I bought Wolverine, this guy here. My son is named after actually Wolverine. Oh, nice. Uh, so he came with this guy's head. And then there was like five other different You're kidding. Five different other ones you would have to buy to create this big one. They've been doing this since I was a teenager. I have never ever completed one. I finally just completed my first one. And it's based on a Canadian uh, legend, the Windigo. Windigo. Uh, the Windigo, which is yeah, the Windigo, which is uh, it, they use it in the Marvel comics, but yeah. The old engine uh, the old uh, sorry, Native American uh, lore was uh, someone went into a hunter goes into the forest. Right. And he has to result to uh, eating his own flesh or human flesh in it. He becomes a Wendigo. And that's just kind of, you know, he I vaguely remember it. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, it, it's kind of the lore of the like Chukacabra. Uh, exactly. Uh, you know, uh, maybe the Yeti. It's got a little Yeti to him. He's got New Jersey little, Devil. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sasquatch. I mean, yeah, we got uh, Winnebago. We got it all. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the Windigo, too. <laughs> and the Windigo. Yeah. I love it. Where you uh, go? Lou, uh, this has been great. Uh, and I've taken up thank a lot you. of your time today. Um, I want to say thank you so much for uh, taking the time out of your day and, and spending it with me and our fans here. Uh, again, Limbo, look for that coming out uh, next week on all the platforms. We also got uh, Time Crafters coming out this fall. Um, yeah. And there's just so much. Folks, uh, go to Texacan as well. Just go to lutemple.com and uh, get all your fictions right there. Thank you again so much for being on the Thank show. Thank you, Ryan. I enjoyed it. I look forward to coming back, man. Oh, definitely. Uh, make sure to keep us in your contact list. I'll do. I'll do. Be safe tonight and always, all right? Be good to yourself and your future self. You as well. For all Lou right. Temple, I'm Ryan Plum. It's been another edition of Ratchet TV. With that, we're out of here. Just tell me what you want to hear.